Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. If you've not been here before, my name's Andrea, and I love the Pilates method. Currently, I'm doing a collaborative series with the lovely Leslie Logan of Leslie Logan Pilates and Profitable Pilates. And our struggle is real today. That's the name of our series. And today we're gonna to look at short spinal massage on the reformer. This is such a beloved exercise that I think the struggle is worth it. And we'll just talk about a little bit of protocol and pitfalls. And in general, just enjoy the lovely stretch. And uh, if you have questions that I don't cover in this video, leave me a comment below. If you wanna see more videos like this, please do click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll never miss a video when I publish. I'll also include a link to Leslie's video about the struggle with short spine in the box below as well. So let's get started. I have a Graz reformer and I have it set up for the short spinal massage. And I have two springs on, my foot bar is down, my headpiece is down most importantly, and my straps are set up for the short spine. If this apparatus is unfamiliar to you, this is how your handle is for the hundred. And then to shorten the strap, the leather loop goes through the handle, and this is where you'll put your foot for short spinal massage. And let's just talk a little bit first about the order of the exercises and where you might encounter this exercise. You may have learned like I did uh, from Marana or from someone else that the short spinal massage in the order of the exercises on the reformer at the intermediate level moves to the, the place uh, as the third exercise in the series and you'll do your footwork, your hundred, and then short spinal massage will be the third exercise. And in my understanding, that's a little bit of a codification of order and systems for training programs. And the original order of all the exercises includes short spinal massage a little bit later in the series, kind of at the midway point after the short box. And I'm going to tell you why I like it a little bit later. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably already know what I'm going to say about this. Um, short spinal massage is an assisted, because you have your feet in straps, big, huge stretch of the entire back uh, and predominantly the low back. And I very much prefer this exercise, since it is such a big, big stretch, to be very, very warm so that I can really benefit from all the delicious aspects of the short spinal massage. It's beloved for a reason. And I've been studying with Jay Grimes and he places it in that sort of original spot in my understanding. And I feel like once you've done all of your exercises up and including the short box, that's really all of your skill building and getting everything ready to go. And then in the middle of your workout, you're super warm. Your first trick, shall we say, is gonna be your short spinal massage. And then you've got your semicircle and you're kind of off to the races, incorporating in more complex exercises, the skills that you've learned and, and kind of warmed up in your body in the first half of your reformer series. And there are times where I know I've had to do it as the third exercise, it's great. I'm a big fan of the overhead as the third exercise. I know that's not often, <laughs> that's a strange statement to hear, but I'm a huge fan of the overhead as the third exercise. And I also feel that the overhead, yes, it is challenging because you have to be upside down and roll down with no assistance. It's really, you just, it happens and you do it or it doesn't happen. And I kind of feel like in the beginning of the series, as you're warming up, that's kind of better to have a self-limiting exercise. So you're either, it's either gonna happen or not. But it may come to pass that should you use the assisted version of the short spine as the third exercise, and so someone may not be ready to be kind of pulled into that big, huge stretch. And so for myself, and also when I teach, I include the short spine later in uh, the series. So that's the end of my rant about the order. <laughs> and now let's talk about, now I have another rant about how to get into the straps. So we've talked about how to set up the straps. And now let's talk about getting into the straps because you want to be really disciplined yourself and you want to really instruct people that you're teaching that they should get into their short spine straps in a, in a very specific manner. Okay, <laughs> because this is Pilates and it is the study of control. <laughs> so. As you're lying down for your short spine, you're gonna get your straps. And when I learned the short spine massage, you were not allowed to do the short spine massage if you could not lift up your feet and put them into the straps. And you'll see there's a lot of people that 
are stiff for, for whatever reason, they pull the strap to put it on their foot. So that's, that's two big springs that you're pulling with your upper body, which is not really a great thing for you to do. And so you know how to lift your bottom. This is not your first Pilates class. You're gonna keep the carriage closed, put your feet in the straps, and then come down into the exercise. I'm gonna do that one more time. And you might have to, you know, for people that this is a challenge to do, A, it's challenging, so they should learn how to lift themselves their own weight themselves and put their feet in the straps, because they need to have control. And you can help people kind of finesse how they're gonna do it. You know, make a plan, like hold both straps with one hand and then use your other hand to kind of open the strap so that they have a big target so they can get up in there quickly if that's a hard move for them to do. And then once they've got one, they should be able to figure out how to put the other one on. And another uh, getting into the straps sort of safety thing I'll, I'll mention, uh, you wanna make sure that people don't dilly-dally trying to put one foot in the strap and leaving one foot in the strap kind of unattended for a long period of time. I have seen it happen where a person in this exercise puts one foot on and is struggling to put the other one on. Meanwhile, they kind of lean to one side and because they have one foot in the strap, they kind of fall off the reformer. And you know, they don't fall far, so they're probably not gonna hurt themselves, but you wanna really be mindful that if they have one foot in the strap, it doesn't kind of haul them off the reformer. Okay, so. Here we go again. I'm going to lift my feet into the straps and make sure they're not twisted because I'm really anal retentive. Okay, so this is the starting point of the exercise. And one thing that you can do to kind of help your, help your straps help you is to kind of always be pushing into them and reaching into them for a supportive, because that's what they're giving you is help and support. So we're gonna talk about going out, and this looks very familiar, right? Because we've already learned how to do frog and footwork. And then we're gonna lift into the straps, using our stomach to control, to control the carriage. That made a little noise. Our hips stay up as our knees come down. And then you're gonna roll down. And I like to think of this exercise as kind of an elaborate footwork or frog exercise because all of the skills that you need to kind of let your bottom and your heels kind of keep uh, knowing where the other one is and keep connected, you're really kind of doing it throughout the whole exercise because here is just really upside down footwork sort of frog and then your bottom and your heels need to know where each other is to roll yourself down. So that was my, that would be my first tip. tip to help you control the exercise, to really use your straps and push into them so that you can pull your stomach in the opposite direction. Keep pushing into your straps so they don't go slack and then keep pushing into them. It'll help you find your bottom and your bottom will help you stretch your back. And then after each one, you wanna really, you know, it's a big stretch of your back. You wanna really keep a moment where your like back is on the mat and you're just like, oh, Okay, I had a big stretch. Let's do it again. Push out, lift into the straps, scoop the belly. Keep control as you lift and then keep control as you roll down. Another thing that happens sometimes, this is a big stretch of your back. And so sometimes people might want to do things like bend their knees really wide, which is a little bit against the nature of the exercise. So they're gonna keep their knees just about as wide as the shoulder rest, and then they're gonna roll down. Hmm. Okay, getting out of the straps, you'll hold the handles so they don't fall on your face. You'll, hold, you'll take your feet out of the straps, and then usually later you're gonna do chest expansion, so you can let go of the strap, pull the handles. Usually that unkinks everything. And then you can just replace the handle onto the pegs behind you and put your headpiece up for the semicircle. So let's talk a little bit about uh, a couple different versions of the short spine. I just wanted to sit up for a moment and recover from my lovely back massage. Um, and then we'll talk about what skills are inherent in this exercise. We already talked a little bit about uh, it being a footwork and a frog. Um, 
complex version of those two exercises being inherent in there, which is great. And then also lifting your hips up into the straps. The first place we learn that is rolling like a ball. So exercises where you learn to lift your hips can help people get into the straps. And also control upside down, which is found in rolling exercises, as well as exercises that are assisted on the Cadillac. So now let's look at two versions of the short spine. Headpiece down. And these are both great versions. One's just a little more straightforward than the other. I'm gonna uh, thread my leather loops through the handles again. And if people do this lying on the carriage, they might wanna take their straps just a little bit away from their face so they don't drop anything on themselves. And then I'm gonna lift my feet up into the straps. Okay, so this is version one. And the difference really comes at the end, the rolling down part. The first part is all set up and pretty much the same. So here's the setup of the lift off. And then from here, the first version is just to keep everything together, use your stomach and roll, move the carriage as you roll down. And that's just a little more straightforward, uh, not as many moving parts and also not as huge a stretch when someone's first learning the exercise. Let's do that version one more time. And then my bottom and my stomach pull me down. And then there's sort of the version we've seen the most, which is where the feet stay up and the back rolls down, which is going to give you more stretch, but it's a little harder to coordinate. The feet stay up until they need to come down. I'm going to do that one one more time. Whew. And that one is a much bigger stretch than the previous one. I'm going to take my feet out, pull on my handles. That one is just not going to give it up today. Oh my gosh. Woo! And then I'm going to hook them onto the pegs. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have other questions, leave me a comment below. I'm happy to answer. And have fun. This is a lovely exercise to struggle with. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later. Bye! I'm going to get my straps. I'm going to climb aboard. Okay. So during the short box exercises, your job, the job of your lower body is to reach out to that strap and keep it tight and silent as, as you do your whole short box series. The